Hey guys, Tyro here bringing you the Starter Series tutorial on hotkeys. Learning and then mastering hotkeys are one of the first avenues of improvement in an RTS. So let's take a look at the general hotkeys as they came in the original Company of Heroes 2 instruction booklet. On F1 to F5 we have the production buildings. In most other strategy games you need to bind your production buildings to control groups. However in Code 2 you never need more than one copy of a production building allowing for these convenient hotkeys. Some players like to use the tabs on the right hand side of the UI. This is more efficient than moving the screen and clicking on the building itself, but less efficient than using the hotkeys. Escape opens the menu. Control A is the ping. These other two do not work in multiplayer. Pinging in Code 2 is tremendously useful for communicating to teammates and squads that they need to retreat, as well as the usual ping functions like attack here, defend here, or capture this. Also, if you spam pings, you can communicate angles of attack to your allies. The next four allow for selection of different unit types. Alt and full stop will toggle the next idle squad and center them on your screen including units in buildings and set up team weapons. However, you've probably got your team weapons set up in a direction you desire and do not want to change them. So this selection is actually kind of annoying. Notice that set up team weapons do not show an idle indicator up here. Most people prefer to use these idle indicators on the right hand side of the screen or perhaps on the tactical map and of course alt and slash works similarly for vehicles. Another jeopardy of using these hotkeys is if you accidentally move your mouse whilst holding alt, it will alter your camera angle and then you have to reset it which can be quite annoying. Control full stop selects all non-garrison infantry including setup team weapons and for that reason it's probably not terribly useful though it does not change that camera angle. Similarly, control slash for vehicles, which is probably more useful. However, both these commands are very far away from what I consider to be the home row QWER on my keyboard. And for that reason, I would not suggest using them at all. Chat with enter and shift enter. You can change the camera angle by holding alt and mouse scrolling, then reset it with backspace. A small number of players like to reset the camera angle at the start of the game where their base is now at the bottom to get better line of sight. I will sometimes alter the camera angle when the ranges involved struggle to fit on the screen, such as setting up an attack route with an anti-tank gun onto an emplacement. I will also change the camera angle when doing fussy building tasks, such as wiring off cover. Try set it so the yellow and black line is on the edge of the obstacle. As you can see, the units are now unable to take cover behind this tank. This wire looks okay from the default camera angle, however it is too close on one side, allowing units to still take cover, and too far away on the other, allowing units to squeeze in. Control groups are handled the same as almost every other strategy game. Numpad 0 opens and closes the tactical map, and I have a dedicated separate tutorial video covering the tactical map. Escape to clear all selections, however if you are in a sub-menu you will have to hit it multiple times to go back each step. Tab will cycle you through your selected units. This is very helpful such as in situations where you have multiple squads that have retreated to base. One man is ready to go but the other two still need reinforcing and healing. Rather than trying to select the high health unit with your mouse which can be difficult when they are all stacked on top of each other. Instead select them all, mash reinforce then hit tab until you have selected the high health squad and give him his movement order. Notice the other two squads aren't moving. This is a quick way to get your units back on the battlefield. And finally set rally point with the right mouse button, another standard in the RTS genre. Unfortunately you are unable to customize your hotkeys in game in Company of Heroes 2. So let's examine the two available options, classic hotkeys and grid hotkeys. So first up we're going to look at the classic hotkey setup for a rear echelon squad. Got A for attack or an attack move. S for stop. These two very common to most other RTS games having it. A for attack and S for stop. And we've got T for retreat. R for reinforce. B for build, in this case field defenses, another classic RTS command. W for wire, and you may be noticing a lot of these hotkeys are labeled related to their function, so W for Y, you know, and this does make them easier to learn. Anyway, R for tank trap, 
G for fighting position, M for munitions cache, F for fuel cache, B for mine, escape to go back to the previous menu. Then we've got E for repair, note R's already taken. M for smoke grenade, and as a side note, USF smoke being on M was actually the reason behind me changing to the grid keys, just so far away on the keyboard. W for wire cutters. And finally V for volley fire. Now switching from classic hotkeys to grid keys is very easy. You don't even have to exit the game. Just hit the options menu, then go to classic hotkeys and switch this to off. Now you can see the difference here. We've got attack on Q, W for stop, R for retreat. And if you look at your keyboard, if you've got a QWERTY one, that will be corresponding with the Q, W and R spots on your keyboard with the E missing. There's no command here. Similar thing on the other rows as well, including the sub menu. And V, you've got V here, but you can hit V or you can hit escape as well. Escape still works. You same as using classic hotkeys. And on the final row, we've got Pierre Smoke. Now, no smokes on X, much closer to the rest of the hotkeys than M on classic. My cutters and volley fire. Now, let's compare the two side by side and add in the hotkeys for the Sherman tank. As you can see, the grid keys are more tightly spaced, leading to less hand movement and thus faster activations. The grid keys are also all on the left hand side of the keyboard where your left hand is accustomed to typing which in my case led to lower input errors. One drawback to the grid key setup is that R is shared by both reverse and retreat meaning you can accidentally retreat squads when you select the wrong unit. That neatly brings me on to the topic of sticky selection which is enabled by default. So here's an example of the problems with using sticky selection. Say you want to set up your maximum in a nice direction. There it goes, all nice and set up. Then you go over here to select your conscript and then you misclick, which is quite possible. Say the model you're trying to click dies at the exact moment you try to click it and then you whiff and click here, or perhaps you just click on a spot which looks like it could select the squad, like this right here, but not quite actually on the squad. And then you miss misclick and then say you do a movement command before you realize that you actually haven't selected right squad then you're moving your maximum by accident or even worse so you're doing a very time sensitive task like telling the squad to retreat which you're not going to have time to then go and double confirm that you've actually got the squad selected you're going to try and retreat as soon as possible then you end up retreating your maximum this is the problem with using sticky selection however you can very easily turn sticky selection off by going into the options menu that off like that this way you know you said you max them up in the way you desire then oh I'm going to try to retreat my conscript squad but I must select now I have nothing selected so if I hit retreat it won't even matter this greatly reduces the impact of making an input error by misselecting a unit I made the switch from classic to grid keys after around 750 hours in the game so it's never too late to make the switch and alongside integrating tactical map usage I credit these two changes with my rise from top 250 to top 100 play. That's it for this installment guys, I'm making a fundraising effort to get myself over to GCS2 and in return I'm going to complete the star series, that's three more videos and one more micro tips video. So if you've enjoyed my videos and would like to see more, please consider donating.